Hello, welcome. Uh, this is actually an interesting problem because it's, it's one of the tougher problems I've seen on the Regents about rational exponents. So take a moment, give it a shot, and then press play, we'll solve it together. Okay, what do we do here? Wow. So we've got this fraction, and it's raised to the two-thirds power. So the first thing you want to think about is how to distribute this exponent to every factor inside. It turns out we can distribute exponents to factors, right? We distribute exponentiation over multiplication. So I'm just going to rewrite this. We got negative 54 times x to the ninth times, I'm going to write like this, you can see, uh, 1 over y to the fourth, right? This would get you what you have right here. 1 times this numerator, this should be a 9 right there, is what we have here. And then y to the fourth times 1 would get you y to the fourth on the bottom. So I'm going to write like this, just so we can see, here I'll rewrite that, um, that actually what we're dealing with are three factors. We're dealing with 1 over y to the fourth, x to the ninth, and negative 54, and it's all being raised to the two-thirds. And just to clarify, maybe to make it a little bit more straightforward, I'm going to write it like this. By definition, 1 over y to the fourth is y to the negative fourth. And in general, we can say, I'm going to write this over here, there's a lot of things happening in this problem, but if you have, let's say, some, some, some base, and it's x to the negative n, that equals 1 divided by x to the nth. So we're using that definition here. That's all to the 2 thirds. Now this looks pretty scary, but all you have to do at this point is take this exponent and distribute it to each of the factors. How do we do that? Well, first we take, I'm just going to write it out, we have negative 54. That is being raised to the 2 thirds power. And then we distribute to x to the ninth. That is being raised to the 2 thirds power. And then y to the negative fourth, that is also being raised to the two-thirds power. How do we do this? Well, there's a law of exponents that tells us if we have um, an exponent with a parentheses and another exponent, we can multiply them. So we can do nine times two-thirds and negative four times two-thirds. I'm going to leave the first part alone for a moment. So all of this becomes negative 54 in parentheses to the two-thirds times what? Well, this is nine times two is 18. In 18, it's all over three. That's going to be 6. And negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 over 3, which is negative 8 thirds. All right, well, I feel like I'm making some headway here. We've got negative 54 to the 2 thirds. And here, 18 divided by 3 is 6, so it's x to the 6th. And this thing, y to the negative 8 thirds, I'm going to put it back down in the denominator. It's just y to the 8 thirds down here. It's 1 over y to the 8 thirds, which can be put back down in our denominator. All right, well, what about this, right? What do we do here? Usually what I would say is, you know, the third here is the third root of 54. That's irrational. So if I couldn't find something there, what I would try to do is apply this exponent too. I'd, I'd square it and then do the, take the third root, but it's still irrational. So what I would do at that point is factor this thing out. And here are the factors I chose. I chose negative 1 times 27 times 2. Now think about why I might do that. There are lots of factors to choose. Why did I choose 27, for example? Well, I chose 27 because I know I'm taking the third root. And 27 is a perfect cube. It's 3 times 3 times 3. So when I break negative 54 apart, I can apply this exponent and distribute it to each of the factors that make 54. And what that ends up looking like is you have negative 1 squared and the third root. Or you can think, take negative 1, find the third root first, which is negative 1, and then square it to get 1. Right? The third root of negative 1 is negative 1 because negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Square that, you get positive 1. What's the third root of 27? That's 3. And square that, you get 9. And then 2, I can't really deal with that so nicely. It's just the third root of 2 squared. But 2 squared is 4. Wow. So we've done all this work, and look what we have. I'm going to leave the 1 out of it. It's just irrelevant, right? It's 9 times 3 fourths, uh, not 3 fourths, the cubed root of uh, 4 times x to the 6th over y to the 8 thirds. Now we scroll up here. I'm going to just grab this real quick. I'm going to hit, you know, I'll do, a, I'll do a screenshot of that. And I'm going to scroll up because we have a lot happening here. But scroll up past all this work. If I paste it in, whoa, that's a really big image. I'm going to scale that down. Okay, let's look at this. Now this problem is, I don't know if I love or hate this next step, 
I feel like I should apologize for it on behalf of all mathematicians everywhere. Um, but I notice that, so we don't need this or this, it has the number i in there, which is the square root of negative 1. That didn't come up. Which choice is it? They both have the same numerator as us. They wrote their factors in a different order. But these denominators, I don't know how I feel about this. Like, they've got these two random breakdowns of this denominator, and one of them is y to the 8 thirds. Now, what I would say is, you want to test them out. I don't look at these two denominators and recognize I have to do the calculations. So what does that mean? Well, right here, let's start with this one. I have y squared times, this is the third root of y squared, so it's y to the 2 thirds. Here, what would I do? I would add these exponents because they have the same base. And 2 is the same as 6 thirds plus 2 thirds, where we add 2 thirds and 2, essentially, and that is 8 thirds, what we have here. In this case, so this is our answer, this one doesn't work because what do we have? We have y to the first times the third root of y. So it's 1 plus a third. 1 is 3 thirds plus 1 third is 4 thirds. It's not what we have here. It's a different number. So I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, it's a very tricky question. But just be used to this idea on the regents that when you simplify these rational exponents, they might give you choices that are actually not simplified, and then you still have to match them up. So don't feel like, oh, I should know a super shortcut here. You break this thing down, you still have to go through the choices and figure out what matches your answer. All right, I hope this helped.